Good afternoon, everyone. So after my last post ETC video, I had a lot of people message me, not only in the comments, but on Discord and stuff, um, just to talk to me about how I felt and, you know, all the stuff I said in the video. And, you know, over the last couple of days, I've been talking to Nico from Belgium and Thomas and some others. Um, and so I, I decided I would post a slightly more positive video, um, sort of like the OJ book, if I did it, and this video would be a little bit more about like if I kept going or if I wanted to do it again. And so again, I'm not putting it off the table. Obviously when I made the first video, I had just gotten back from ETC and I was disappointed um, in the performance. And you know, I was obviously happy to be back from all the heat and stuff. Um, and then obviously you have that little bit of excitement or like, Ooh, I could do it again. Um, next year, got 360 days to train and whatnot. So given I, a lot of people listen to this and you know, they want to hear what I have to say, I guess I will then say, if I did do it again, what things would I focus on differently? Um, where did I think I lacked in maybe preparation or army or whatever? And then maybe some other commentary around ETC itself. So, uh, I don't know really what to show on the screen because why not? I don't know, but let's talk about ETC itself. Um, and then we'll talk about, you know, where I would go from there and whatnot. So again, you know, I said some of the downsides to ETC were, you know, the drama, the politics and all that kind of shit. And so I can't really change that. Uh, I am the co-captain, but I pretty much will give up captaincy. Um, and I decided this before ETC even happened. It's just a lot of work, which is fine. I don't mind. I'm on the I'm online all the time, but it's a lot of shit I don't want to do. I don't want to be in the political tough. I don't want to vote. Um, I really just want to play. And in my mind, you know, captaincy gets you a spot on the team pretty much. But to be fair, in my mind, I was like, well, if I want to play, all I really got to do is try out, and I'm probably got a good chance to play again. So, you know, I, I did the captaincy. It, it, that's not for me. I think I had some good leadership stuff, but I'm also not as hard as some people would be. Um, anyway, I'm not, I don't want to be captain. Uh, I don't want to get into the total politics of Spain and Poland either. It, it, there is, if I had to vote on something for ETC, if I could make a change, I would get rid, I would make Mercs too. I think Mercs should be two max. Maybe, maybe special exceptions for one or two more, depending. Um, but, you know, it just sucks that, like, again, special circumstances, but I'm going to use examples. You know, Ukraine, they get a special pass, but I'm, I'm using them as an example, too. They had two German guys and two Italian guys. Mexico had one Mexican, a bunch of Americans, and, like, three Spanish people who were their best players. Um, uh, what other country stood out to me? Australia obviously always has four Germans on it. Um, oh, no, the, one, there was a, yeah. And there was like a scattering of others. You know, there was like six or seven Americans that weren't on Team America or on other teams. And I get it that people want to go and they'll find spots as needed. And I do think, you know, some countries need Mercs to help fill out. But it, it feels like it's gone past... Oh, we need somebody. We only have seven guys. We're, you know, Canada. And they at least have good reason because it's tough to get people sometimes. Especially from the, like the New Zealands, the Canadas from far away. But it's starting to feel like they're just taking these people to fill in spots just to have better people on their team. Right? Like, would people really be excited if, I don't know, Germans won't do it, but. If the Germans were like, hey, Crusader, Furion, you want to join our team? And then, like, it's half Germans, half the best Polish, and then just go win it like that. No one would like that. Now, no one's really abusing it that much. Probably the Australians the most. It, it abuse, air quotes. But I just don't like it. It feels like you're not playing against the country. You're playing against a country that then gets four people that, you know, you can hire the best mercs out there and then just say... You know, it just doesn't feel as like united in that sense. And there was multiple countries that did that. So I would like to see it too. Maybe a little bit more enforced rules there. Um, but that was just more of a preference thing. I'm not here to like, it's like so unjust, but 
I just want I didn't mention the last video and I want to mention it now. Okay. Anyway, moving forward, um, from an ETC perspective, what would I have changed for myself? I, I thought about it. My army, I don't think my list was bad. I think it, it, it was good. It had its, it was fine in, in practice and everything. From a pairing perspective, I probably should have took care of myself a little bit more. Um, I think I sacrificed, I'm using sacrifice. I sacrificed myself a couple times for the good of the team. And it was probably not the greatest idea all the time. Um, just from a who should get points perspective. I mean, it worked, it worked for decently. I would say of six rounds, twice I got the pairing I wanted. One time I just played straight up bad. I'll, I'll take full responsibility for the the Ukrainian game. 100% will not back down. That was my bad. I could have beat that guy or at least got better than five. Um, and then the other four, I sent myself over three times, and that's where I got, like in the final four, I sent myself across. And that's where I got the Ogres, the VS, and the warrior mirror with Italy. And even the Italians and I talked and the, he was better in the mirror slightly. Um, enough so to make it annoying because of that master of alchemy. And obviously the Ogres and VS are just games that are difficult to kind of run in. They're not the yellows. Like they're yellows because I can sit behind a hill and, and hopefully do stuff. And I, I left points on the table in those games. Don't get me wrong. I didn't play those yellows great or those matchups great. I probably left a point or two in the ogre game and then probably two or three, depending on the VS, how I felt like playing it in hindsight, this is all hindsight. Um, and, but I don't think I could have pressed for much, much more um, unless like the magic went crazy early on or something. And so then you're looking at the one where my Herald died, whatever. And then I kept myself in hand for the first round where I played the warrior mirror, but I had, it was me and the DL versus the Warriors and the Ogres of Germany. And I had a good match versus the Ogres, at least I believe so. And basically we took like two yellowish matches instead of just me taking the Ogres and giving the DL to the other Warriors. Even though I know that Warriors, little Thomas had our DL positive. Um, I'd be curious. I mean, we ended up getting like, we, we got 10-10 because we got 13 for me and thir seven for the for the uh, RDL, but I don't know. I, I think I think RDL had some play versus my own list, especially with like the mirrored scale hordes and stuff. But I think that kind of started off the the saving of people, quote unquote, saving. Um, and that's fine. I mean, it, it is what it is. It can be a little tough. You know, we did get our VS into some good matches. VC, VC, VC got the best matches, Chris. But he, he, other than one game where I think we misrated it as a team. He, he delivered the points of giving, you know, he got all his ones and twos and threes uh, every round. So, but I mean, if you get your greens and you deliver, perfect. I do think we misrated some, a lot of other games um, that kind of hurt us. It, it kind of, when you send over an army first and they give you your two greens, you know something's wrong. You Because like, I know for a fact, versus Germany, we got their dark elf. Actually, I can show this. I forgot that I have. So this is, you can see how we put up things. You can see our matrix. I don't really care if you see our matrix. So you can see we put up ogres or orcs. They gave us dark elves and demons. We took the dark elves. They gave us our ancient species. Okay, well, you can see how it went down. You can see at the end we had ogres and warriors versus warriors and DL. And that's how it kind of ended up. So, for example, I know Stottle had these two as their, his one and twos. But I know for a fact that both of these guys had Stottle as their best matchup. So now Stottle ended up winning it, though it was a close game, way closer than maybe we would have thought, even though it broke open for us. Um, that being said, it happened a couple times where I think Italy was a big one where we messed up because they gave us our one and two again, right? We chose the one. And then we got zero. And maybe in hindsight, we take the DL, but maybe in hindsight, we still, it's not as egregious here because if you get put up first, you're, 
you're trying to take a bad matchup for the team. So if KOE is bad for the team and he thinks he's good, even if he thought it was yellow, we would probably have still taken it just to get them off the board. Um, and then obviously we, we talked about how in this is the round where, where Mintz had it as his number two, one. And in hindsight, we misrated it as a team and it should never have been that high. Um, and we shouldn't have sent him over. And this really hurt a lot of our pairings because of, in hindsight, Italy was very scared of our VC list because it, it's just very good versus, you know, like KOE and some other, and Warriors and stuff. And so when they were off the table and given to the Soaring Army who, like, wanted to then him, we, it, it kind of messes with the rest of the pairings, which we ended up getting, well, it looks like we got a lot of positive matchups. We got Rick Rolled and, and our green got, like, three points combined. I lost. This probably was a little, probably not a four. Um, again, it's probably yellow with a slight minus. Like I, sh it's not like an auto loss, but having the alchemy master is a lot better than not having it. Um, so I think pairing wise, I'll just scan through really quickly. So if you want to pause the video and kind of see who we put up and stuff, um, you can see kind of where we. It was also interesting, like, and this is something I kind of learned. Um, doing this was, you know, if you take EOS, for example, we put up EOS first and we were like, oh my God, don't give us the Ogres, don't give us the UD, don't give us the VS, you know, so many bad matchups for him. And they have giving us his best matchup on paper, at least to us. And so they're not always going to give you, like we almost never got the worst matchup for our, the first person we put up. I mean, the worst one that happened was, I think, this round where we got our six and our eight, and we were happy to get rid of the UD. Otherwise, we almost always got, like, a one or a two matchup. I mean, again, we got, he got his one, two. I mean, if we just go through it real quick. He got his one, two here. He got his two. What is it? I'm looking at subtle. Where's subtle? Two four here. Two four one two two four. Ben got his one eight. Sato got his eight six. Sato got his one two. Sato got his one two. So we got our one two three. We got our number one every time but one round versus the first army we put up. And you would never expect that, um, but it happens. And so you. From a pairing perspective, you know, I think we could be better about getting rid of people early. I think I could have probably went up second potentially sometimes. I don't know. Or like, who do you want in the final four? Who are you going to protect? Are you going to say, fuck it? Um, maybe it comes with army, the way we design our armies a little bit more. Um, not 100% sure. So from an army perspective, you know, I can't say it was a bad army. It did very well in testing. I usually played games that were a little bit more... Like, I played versus KOE a lot. Um, I played versus ID, which is defensive, but it's a little bit easier for me to go into them compared to, like, the VS list. Um, so, to be aggressive again. And, in fact, I, I always rated EOS pretty low because of the cans and steam tank, which is always annoying. But there's probably a world where I say, at least those matchups, I have more of an opportunity to go at them. Yes, I have to take a lot of shooting, but... It's not like when I get there, I get locked in combat by 60 rats and then shot into combat. Or like an ogre bus that has Liger's tongue and poison attacks. Like when you get there, it's like a bunch of humans that suck in combat. So so that's just kind of my commentary there. I probably should have thrown myself up a couple more times, like versus the Saurian Ancients or something like that. So um, from a pairing perspective, that's kind of how I felt. Um yeah, there's not much, too much to really go deeper than that, I think. Um, rating matchups as a team will be something to improve on, but I don't really want to talk about the team itself because I don't. we're going to do a debrief. I don't want to call anybody out necessarily. It's really about me and, like, how would I get better and improve upon myself. Um, I think I mentioned it in the last video, but maybe I didn't. Um, one thing, so if we, if we break down the game into – and I've said this in other videos, that's probably my weakest point is um, – like the match, and I felt it extremely when I was at ETC. It's how to play the matchup. And this sounds dumb because you think, oh, you know, that should be a huge part of the game, and it, and it is. But 
I pride myself on like the micro decisions, like the combat reforms and the cool little tricks you can do there. And honestly, I had one, I had a couple cool ones, but I didn't have many partly because of the matches and partly because of, yeah, partly was just because of the matches I got. And so when I had to lean back on like, Oh, how do I, what's the best way to approach this game? Um, I did feel like I lacked there. Um, and some of that can be just lack of... I hadn't played VS that much, though I did get better at it. I, I learned a little bit at least to not run it and die. Uh, I didn't play many mirrors, to be fair. So I felt like... And I didn't play in the VC Death Star. Honestly, I think five of the games, I'll, I'll honestly say, like, I didn't have a great sense of how the match should go compared to some of the other armies that, like, I played so much versus ID and KOE. And DL, like those three armies, I and Dark Elves, I'd played a lot versus those four armies. I never got even close to playing them. Um, and that, and that's my bad too. And I'll, I'll take the blame on getting games in um, with the, against different armies, especially near the end, closer to ETC. It is what it is. Um, I had my son at the end of November. Games declined because I'm he's only a baby. I'm not gonna. Re- I don't regret. <laughs> you know, spending less time with him for the game perspective, but it's it's a thing that happened um, for sure. Uh, army wise, I said I was okay. Matchup wise, I didn't like how I paired. I had issues with some playing. I probably tilted a bit um, in some of the games. Uh, again, I'm not blaming. I mean, losing the Herald turn one is just yeah. What can you do from there? In the game versus the VC, I didn't play it right. Though, I, I will say I, I tried to make a big move on his block with like a kind of a cool move that failed. And part of, and this is a bad reason to do it, but I know Caps next to me had something really bad happen to him. And I was like, oh shit, this is not good. Maybe we need some points. And that's not how you should do it at all. That, that is absolutely not a good excuse. Um, but I know that did affect me a little bit. Um, you know, and I was disappointed. In my performance, do I? I still think I'm the best American USA player, at least like top to bottom. I don't, I don't think this changed my mind in that sense. I think I'm still the best if I wanted to be. Um, maybe not at the, in this tournament at this moment, like prep wise, but like in the end, I would say I'm still. I don't like. I don't feel that I'm not just after this one little thing. Um, So going forward, what would I want to improve upon? I don't know. List-wise, it's kind of interesting. Obviously, Warriors aren't bad. Um, One thing people talked about, other Warriors guys and I and some of the others, that was kind of interesting was this idea that Warriors are kind of like a known quantity. Like, we've all played against Heralds now. We've all played against Elders and even the Super Lord has been was in like four or five armies so people had known about it and so there was not as much of a trick out there and usually i would tell you that oh tricks don't matter it doesn't wonky things don't matter and now i think that that's a lie i think having wonkiness in your list and being good with that wonkiness um is a positive because and this is maybe something the italians do really well because like the italian orc list which performed pretty well, if I remember correctly, is that not everyone can play against every army, right? We're all, most of us, most of us are adults with jobs and families, and we're not playing 300 games a day, a year, um, and, and playing versus every single list that's out there. So having something a little bit unique, that's still good. I mean, it still has to be good, has the advantage of, you know, oh, maybe something they haven't seen that before and, and they get, like, caught out by it. You know, I think our VC list, um, that means modified Thomas's list, um, but the, that theme of, like, you know, movement and reaping and banshees, like, it wasn't popular at the event and it wasn't popular in the meta. And so there's an advantage there because other than Germany, who, like I said, Thomas made the list so they knew what was coming, some armed people just didn't know what was coming. 
And so that's always an advantage um, to have that kind of opportunity. I don't think we had many armies like that other than maybe Minces. Uh, Maddox is a little bit, but it didn't really end up helping us in that sense. But he got kind of, I kind of wrecked him in the pharynx a bit. Um, but yeah, there was a little bit mixed there where like if you can do something a little bit weird, um, as well as, you know, for better or worse, ETC breeds a little bit more defensive play style. Um, and so having the range advantage for a good bit of your armies is important because there are games where like, if you just sit there and shoot them, you can get a 15. Um, I think this is something the old high elves and probably still the high elves now do well was, you know, you take an army that has a lot of good shooting and magic and then you pair it with single models that are very strong and you say, okay, well, I have the tools to be aggressive with like the Griffin and the Phoenix while still shooting you for points. And then if it's a matchup where for whatever reason I can't fight you as well, I can sit back and shoot you down and score some points with my single models and, and keep things alive. Um, that's like a very, like a safe approach, it feels like. Now you still have to be good with the list. I'm not trying to sit here and be like, anyone can do it. But it's that nice, like middle ground approach where you don't have to go, but you, a lot of matches, you can sit there and like shoot people. I guess you can go the opposite way and say beast herds are really good because they are just, because of the ambushing, like it's, it's almost like being good against shooting is a big positive. Like if you're going to be an aggro army, your weakness shouldn't be shooting less, per se. This sounds dumb, but like how many, we were so, some of our more static lists were so scared of like beast herds and ambushers and ogres with like ambushing that you can almost like trap people more. Take a, let's take Empire for example. Let's just use this as an example and again i'm not a beast herd expert or pairing a beast herd expert but let's just say empire i don't really like playing empire because the cannons and whatnot um but if you say for example beast herds who have ambushers well now they have monsters as well that go up and want to fight you but they have the now the empire is scared because they have shamanism druidism and ambushers coming from behind um it almost turns that into probably turns it into a good matchup. Um, and so because there's a lot of defensive armies like that, having an army, like when somebody puts up that first and you get to put your beast herds up, it probably has like a big um, advantage. And maybe, you know, in talking to the other little Thomas, our matrices for warriors were typically like yellowish because like a lot of things we could play against and had a game, even if it was like a defensive game. You know, that's not exciting. So maybe the fool the other way where you kind of say, all right, you know, I'm going to go with an army that has more hard reds and hard greens and just avoid the reds and score points that way. Um, I don't know what that looks like, obviously, with the meta changing and, and just going through. But uh, I think you have to kind of go in and say, this is how it's going to be. And maybe my that was my thought process with warriors and it just didn't end up pairing out that way or, or working out that way. Um, again, I, total blame on myself. I'm not trying to blame my army or anything like that. Uh, I would now from my army perspective, I don't know what I would play in the next season. Um, warriors are definitely not off the table. I own dark elves, beast herds, um, I, if orcs weren't getting another book, I'd consider them. But you never know what's going to get buffed or nerfed. Um, from a play perspective, I probably focus a l way too much on the like nuanced rules shit, uh, which is still fun, and I actually enjoy that part of the game way more. But there is a lot of like game planning and, and knowing how the like macro will say to the game that perhaps I should get better at um, or not just rely on my like army being single models and like, Oh, it doesn't matter how I deploy. I'll just go run at them and do this and do some cool trick or something like that. So 
I, I do need to get better about it. Uh, one like very specific thing I remember from ETC is I'm a little bit lazy on like catching things with single models. And what I mean by that is like make like early on. Yes. I'm fine about not letting people get out of my arc and stuff like that. But I think late game sometimes when I'm like chaffing something with a single model or just, um, you know, making a unit clip me, I don't think as much about like, Oh, they can reform and move eight inches or move four inches. How can I guarantee that they can't get out of my arc? Um, and really taking a couple seconds to be like, all right, what's the optimal way to chaff this unit so that I can chaff them? I can make it so maybe only one gets in or two get in and they can get out of my arc because when they, you know, when they get out of your arc, you got to go to re-chaff them. And then it's like this dance of just continually putting your model in front of them. Um, and so I, that's definitely something I could get better about or being a little more at it, you know, on it. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, damn, did I have something else I was going with? It is difficult, you know, the idea of going back. Some parts that are difficult. One is obviously the scene. It's a lot of online games um, and some local tournaments. Uh, you know, it's always a lot of work to put in and go. Um if it's in somewhere nice, I think my wife would be more willing to let me go. She'd probably come with me because our son would be old enough to stay with the grandparents without us. Um, so it's definitely not out of the question there. But you never know. I mean, I wanted to make this video to say if I came back, if I, I mean, if I come back, I mean, it, it feels like I'm going to at least play some. Um, I was just really down from before. But yeah, there you go. There's some. What would I do different? How would I change? Nothing too crazy. Little overview. I'll make some more videos another day. Thanks.